discussing one-time special orders. So with a one-time special order, if we have idle production capacity, that means that, for example, if we can produce 10,000 units during the period and we're only currently per producing 7,500 units, then we have the, the capacity to accept 2,500 more units. So if we have the capacity and a special order comes in and there are no long-run implications, then we have to ask ourselves one specific question. However, if we have some idle capacity and a special order comes in and the possibility of us having to, uh, it would change our current production level, then of course that gets into a whole other uh, realm of questions, which we're not going to discuss in this uh, particular uh, series here. But if we do have the capacity and it has no long-run implications on our current business, we have to ask ourselves then, does the special order generate additional operating income? Fairly simple question. If the answer is yes, then you guessed it. We would, of course, accept that offer. If the answer is no, we would reject. So what a one-time special order decision does, it compares the relevant costs with the relevant revenues to determine if there's any profitability. So let's look at an illustration of a one-time special order. And this is looking at a special order of um, 5,000 units. So if you look at columns B and D in this spreadsheet, you will see that this is our current production level of 30,000 units, or selling level. We're selling 30,000 units here. And so they're giving us our revenue and our cost, and then of course our operating income. So this is our current production level, or selling level that we're selling. And then we're hoping or considering adding a special order of 5,000 units. If we do that, then our revenues will go from 60,000, where, where they are now, selling 30,000 units, to 655,000. So a change of $55,000, giving us a total operating income then in the end of 47,500. But think back to our discussion on relevant information. It's something that differs among alternatives. So look at um, row six, which is revenues. What differs among these two is $55,000. That's the only difference. That $55,000, that the that that $5,000 or 5,000 special order unit will bring in. So that's what we have in column H. We have the relevant information listed here. So revenues are relevant because they are different, but only $55,000 is relevant. Variable cost, variable manufacturing costs are relevant. Those are different. They differ among the alternatives. And that's it. Fixed costs aren't going to change whether we add this 5,000 unit special order or not. And our operating income, if you look at the two blue circles here, the operating income does increase by $17,500. And that is the relevant portion of this decision, that $17,500. So let's now then look at a, a real example of this. And before we get started, I will remind you that all of these documents that I'm going through in these presentations can be found on my website at web.me.com slash brianruth. It may make it easier for you to follow along with these videos if you, if you go and get those documents. The Award Plus company manufactures medals for winners of athletic events and other contests. Its manufacturing plant has the capacity to produce 10,000 medals each month. Current production and sales are 7,500 medals per month. Okay, so let's stop there. So it tells us we have the capacity to produce 10,000 medals, and our current production and sales is 7,500 medals. So we still have 2,500 medals there that we could produce. So the company normally charges $150 per medal. Cost information for the current activity level is as follows. So they give us our variable cost, um, vary with number of units produced, and they give us our direct materials and direct labor, which are our two variable costs. 
And then they tell us we have another variable cost that has to do with batches. So we're producing these metals in batches. So they give us that variable cost. And then we have two fixed costs. We have manufacturing and marketing fixed cost. And then, of course, our current total cost. Award Plus has just received a special one-time only order for 2,500 metals. So the first thing you've got to ask yourself, do I have the excess capacity? And in this case, we do. And they're going to they're gonna pay us $100 per metal for these. So accepting the special order would not affect the company's regular business. Award Plus makes metals for its existing customers in batch sizes of 50 metals. So this is current customers. 150 batches times 50 metals per batch is those 7,500 metals that we're currently uh, producing. The special order requires Award Plus, Plus to make the metals in 25 batches of 100 each. So the question here is, should Award Plus accept this special order? So then that's when you come into, does it add to um, operating income? So I've put the problem up in the upper right hand corner here. It's kind of small. Um, this is why I stress to go get my documents uh, or these documents from the website. It would make it a lot easier to follow along because we're going to need this data to complete this problem. So the first thing we have to think about is what are the incremental revenues that we're discussing here. So that's what we start with. Incremental meaning how does those revenues increase? What are the incremental changes in revenue? So think about what's happening here. It says that they're going to pay us $100 for each metal and we're going to get 25 or we're going to sell 2,500 metals. So the incremental revenues for this special order is $250,000. That's how our revenues will change if we accept this special order. But in addition to revenues, our cost will change as well. So the first one that will change will be direct materials cost. Well, that if we look at our problem, those variable costs are vary with the number of units produced. So we have to find out or compute what is the direct materials per unit. So to do that, our current level is $262,500 for, for 7,500 metals. So to get a unit cost, we would take 262,500, divide that by the 7,500 metals, and then multiply it times the 2,500 metals for our special order, and that will give us our direct materials cost for this special order, which comes to $87,500. The second cost that we will incur with this special order is the direct labor costs. We'll do the same, things, same thing with those because the problem tells us that direct labor varies with units produced as well. So direct labor for the 7,500 metals that we're currently producing is $300,000. So to get a unit labor cost, we would divide the 300,000 by the 7,500 units, multiply that times the 2,500 metals for the special order, and that will give us our incremental direct labor cost for the special order of $100,000. And the last variable cost that they give us in the problem is batch costs, incremental batch costs. And this one they tell us that uh, this is based on batches and it's $500 per batch. And if you look at the last sentence in the problem, it says the special order requires a work plus to make the metals in 25 batches. So we're going to have to produce 25 batches, and we know that each batch cost us $500. So that's the total cost, incremental batch cost, of $12,500. So we can total up our incremental cost um, of $200,000, subtract that from our incremental revenues, and we find that the incremental operating income from accepting this special order would be $50,000. So what do you think we're going to do? We have to think now back to the question, does the special order generate additional operating income? The answer is yes, it does. Therefore, we accept this special order and we would fulfill it. Thank you for watching my video. I would encourage you to visit my website at www.accountinged.tk. Here you can find current accounting and business news, 
accounting business and education blog, my accounting lecture documents, uh, access to all of my e-lectures as well as the accompanying e-assignments, and a bookstore where you can find great deals on books as well as textbooks.